Hello everyone and welcome back to another game of Marvel Crisis Protocol. This is the map that's been getting used for Fallout Wasteland Warfare, but fancied trying it out for a Crisis Protocol match. Uh, just pretend it's like modern day Texas or something I guess. And today we have for you an 18 threat match of the Midnight Suns making their second appearance on the table going up against a pretty intimidating looking, at least on paper, a Brotherhood of Mutants list. So we'll look at the teams and then go over the crises that are being played, including a new one. So quite a hefty five miniatures, making up the 18th threat for the Midnight Suns, being led by Blade, of course, giving the Bump in the Night affiliation bonus. Uh, the big gun he's brought is Doctor Strange, and then we also have Iron Fist, Black Cat, who will hopefully be stealing objectives. I was going to say nicking, but that's a bit too Scottish, I think. And then also Moon Knight, and their tactics cards we'll have to come over here for. We have Siege of Darkness, Seven Sons of Cinnabis, Bats, the Ghost Hound, and then two generic ones, Brace for Impact and Medkit. Medpack, I mean. So only four minis in the Brotherhood of Mutants list compared to the five in the Midnight Suns, but they are pretty powerful. So of course we have Magneto bringing his affiliation bonus for handing out extra power when scenery gets destroyed. And he's brought his kids, so we have Scarlet Witch and we have Quicksilver. And then the wild card is Mr. Sinister, I'm not sure if he fits in with them or not. I'm sure we'll see as we go on. There are tactics cards though, so this is going to be different for Sinister as well because his unique ones aren't here. Difficult to please, can I borrow that? The Whims of Chaos, Asteroid M and Magnetic Crush. So these are the two Crisis cards being played. The threat value is on the extraction, which is Fear Grips the World as Worthy Terrorized Citizen, so that's the hammers. One victory point for each hammer, plus one attack die, but tactics cards cost one more. And then the 19 threat secure is the new one from the... Um, the convocation releases that just came out. So there's three dark portals, Dormammu dark portals, and you score one for each one you're securing in the cleanup phase. You can interact with a dark portal, you drop all objective tokens you're holding, if any. You roll a die, if it's not a blank or a skull, you can get placed within one of another dark portal of your choice, otherwise you get placed within one by your opponent of a dark portal of their choice. In either instance, because you're using Dormammu's dark portals, you suffer one damage. So the hammers are one close to each objective, uh, sorry, each deployment rather, one on each side, and then the three dark portals are right down the center like that. So here we are at deployment, the Midnight Suns are to screen left, and the Brotherhood of Mutants is on your right, and it will be the Midnight Suns going first, but there's less miniatures in the Brotherhood, so let's look at them real quick. S Mr. Sinister is on his car, Magneto is next to him, and has also set up his first metal construct there, which generates some extra power as well. Scarlet Witch is up on the building there, and then Quicksilver is off down there, but obviously he's very fast, so he can pretty much get wherever he wants, or needs to be. And then the Midnight Suns line up, Iron Fist down here, Moon Knight, Doctor Strange, and then Blade and Black Cat up the other end there. And as said, it is the Midnight Suns taking first activation. Portals and Hammers, let's do this and see what happens. Black Cat got the game started because she wants to run down that hammer before Quicksilver gets a chance to activate. She moves long but needed to use both for movement, both actions rather, to get within one of the portal and one of the hammer that was on top of it to pay one power to pick it up. So she's securing that portal, she's got a hammer, that means Quicksilver can't snatch it and hopefully Mr. Sinister is too slow to get to the opposite flank but I guess we'll see. Mr. Sinister's larger base and medium move actually did give him more than enough with two medium moves to copy Black Cat, move twice, get over to this portal on the opposite flank, secure it, and paid one power to pick up the hammer that was on top of it as well. Moon Knight activated next and moved up medium for his first action and that dice next to him there is his multiple personalities roll. If he gets a wild or a hit, and it was a hit in this case, it gives him two extra dice on the next attack he makes. So he threw throwing glaives at Mr. Sinister, bumping that up to six physical attack did really well with it and it did three. It also has rapid fire on a wild so he got to do another one, uh, only four dice for this one though and that one still managed to do one so Mr. Sinister got really really badly hurt there had the extra dice not been thrown into that first attack he would have only had two damage in total I think so that was just a very lucky multiple personalities roll. Well there's not much that can be done for Mr. Sinister right now so the Brotherhood went with Quicksilver he sped around the corner along, now Blade can just double move and also contest that portal so there was no point him wasting his turn like that. Uh, so he instead did a supersonic strike on Black Cat, it's range 3. Unfortunately he only got one hit through which she easily avoided and she also makes it so you can't modify dice. He also needed a crit and a shield I believe to get a free advance on it and it was just 
a, a bad roll. Not looking good for the Brotherhood with their dice luck so far. Stephen Strange was next up and first of all he medium moved so he was on the far side of the hammer right in front of him next to the car axle there. Paid one power to pick it up. Then he medium moved again such that he is just inside one of the central portal as well kind of forcing either Magneto or Scarlet Witch to kind of come and impose him as opposed to help out Mr. Sinister. The Scarlet Witch activated and her basic hex bolt is scary enough as it is at range 4, 6 mystic dice uh, and it can do a bunch of status effects on wilds or, or non skulls. But it's even scarier if after her first move she pays one power to pick up a celestial hammer bumping that up to 7 and then she uses it and then her attack roll gets 3 crits, 1 skull amongst other successes and uh, poor Stephen Strange took 6 damage to the face after he did a full reroll because he might as well have after his first roll uh, he generated 1 extra power for having a shield in there but he took 6 damage and that is a insta turn 1 from full health to 0 health Wanda is scary and the hammer that Doctor Strange was holding will now be placed within 2 second last activation for the Midnight Suns Iron Fist activated he moved up medium to the wall here then did a flying kick over it into Mr. Sinister only 4 physical but Mr. Sinister whiffed his defense roll, 2 damage, that's exactly enough that Mr. Sinister is dazed. Iron Fist then paid the one power he generated from that flying kick to steal the hammer that Mr. Sinister had been holding. It also means he is the sole person now holding this portal as well. So that's kind of payback for what happened to Doctor Strange, although that was mostly Moon Knight spiking that initial glaive attack on him that did the work there. So Magneto himself was the last to go for the Brotherhood, and uh, he moves slow, but I guess he, he moves slowly, but he moves with deliberate purpose. So he moved small twice with his larger base there, that gave him enough to get to the portal in the middle and pick up the hammer that Doctor Strange dropped for one of his power, his two power because of the construct. So he's the only one claiming the center, and that does take us, oh sorry, we still have to go with Blade, who doesn't need to go over and help claim the portal with Black Cat now, so that might mean he's free to do something else. So Blade decided just to reposition with a double medium move. It got him that close to the middle, even with the Bump of the Night affiliation bonus if he was willing to spend power, that still would not put him within contesting range of the portal there. So he just moved up and is ready to start brawling and giving out Blade statuses next turn. So at the end of battle round one, we already have two people who are dazed and they'll be flipping over their cards, which I didn't see coming, but that's what happens when the dice spike sometimes, especially when you throw hammers into the mix. As things stand point-wise, the Brotherhood of Mutants hold two hammers, one on Magneto and one on Scarlet Witch. They also hold the central portal for one victory point, so that's three in total. The Midnight Suns also hold two hammers, one on Black Cat, one on Iron Fist, which he stole from Mr. Sinister, and they hold two portals, because Iron Fist is holding this uncontested currently, because Mr. Sinister is dazed, and Black Cat is holding the one at the far side of the table there as well putting them to four. So as we're going to battle round two, four plays three, and the Brotherhood of Mutants have taken first activation. So Magneto got battle round two started, and you don't mess with Magneto, he is scary. Also his second metal construct had been erected there in the power phase, putting it right between Doctor Strange and Blade on purpose. He started with a reverse polarity, his basic strike, within three so he could reroll the attack dice against Doctor Strange. It did two damage. He only needed it to do one because that gave him enough power to do Shrapnel Blast which you can measure line of sight from a metal construct within three so he did it from here. Big area two blast. Six dice normally I think. Up to seven because he's holding a hammer and Doctor Strange took three leaving him on one HP and Blade took six. It spiked super hard and his defense roll did nothing so that's an insta daze on blade, which is not good, and this gets destroyed and shares out the two power it's worth via his affiliation bonus to his teammates. So yeah, blade isn't doing so hot. Doctor Strange is one away from death. Magneto's done, and he he did work. So Doctor Strange activated to try and make sure he actually does something in this game. He used Osher's Refuge, whatever it's called, to heal himself for two of the five damage he just took. He then also decided to make a tactical withdrawal. He retreated, he charged backwards because he can't hold the middle without Blade there because Magneto and Scarlet Witch can hold majority so it seemed better that he try and reinforce one of the flanks. So he immediately moved twice over to Black Cat over there on the left flank and then also used Medkit, two more power to heal himself for three. So he is actually back to full power, uh, sorry, full health. He was sitting on full power with the beating he's been taking 
And he's still got a bunch left over as well, so he can buff himself for Black Cat if they come under more fire. He he did have enough power to do his best attack, uh, the Crimson Bands of Citriarch or whatever it's called, but Magneto's got such good Mystic Defense, he's got six Mystic Defense, and it just didn't seem worth it. Mr. Sinister activated, sitting on a lot of power from the beating he took in turn one. He started with genetic splicing his beam four on Iron Fist. After it's resolved, he gets one genetic sampling token, which he can use to lower damage on himself or to buff his best attack. It did lots more than was expected of it. Four damage through, leaving Iron Fist on one, so instead of going big, uh, Mr. Sinister just decided to sample more DNA, got another sample out of it, fired another beam at him. That one did three which is much more than is required, the Iron Fist is also dazed, will not be getting a turn, he dropped his hammer that was originally Mr. Sinister's, and Mr. Sinister has paid to take it back. So Moon Knight activated, he moved up Mijum to try and help out Iron Fist. You can see his multiple personality rolls was unfortunately a skull, which does nothing. No bonus, no negative, just does nothing. But he had enough power sitting from his good first round to use oh, Avatar of Conchu, I think it's called, which is his best attack, it's Mystic, and Mr. Sinister does have okay Mystic defense, but it's 7 dice, so he thought, try his luck, the attack roll had 2 successes. So they were easily blocked, and it did nothing. It would also have done a push, but Mr. Sinister is size 3, and so he's too large to be pushed by because it's size 2 or less. Second last activation for the Brotherhood was Wanda, she moved up medium, she's just inside 1 for that central portal to hold it with her father and well within range 4 to use a hex bolt on Moon Knight who sadly, like normally he can buff his defense against mystic attacks, he used all his power trying to take out Mr. Sinister and failed. So hex bolt got him for 3 damage of his, I think he has 5 on his healthy side thereabouts. So now it's over to Black Cat to end off battle round, we're only in battle round 2 and everyone is already so, so close to death. So Black Cat activated, moved to the far side of the portal there so that she was within range 2 of Quicksilver there, Cat's Claws with Pierce on a wild, and normally 4 dice but she's holding the hammer, up to 5. His defense roll was okay, her attack roll was better, all said and done, 2 damage got through to Quicksilver and it is over to him to end off the second battle round. So as you can see Quicksilver has vanished, he did his basic supersonic strike on Black Cat just hoping to do at least 1 damage, he actually ended up doing 4 and getting velocity which lets him do another one on a, a different target. He did it on Doctor Strange, but Doctor Strange fully blocked the damage, generated himself one extra power as well. But because he dealt at least one damage to Black Cat, he met the criteria for can I borrow that? After an attack made by uh, Quicksilver that damaged an enemy character holding the asset is resolved, he can pay two to play this card. Move one asset from the target character to Quicksilver. Doesn't let you hold more than the crisis would normally, but he didn't have a hammer. So he stole the hammer from Black Cat and then scarpered into the ruins of the building down there, so he went like that into the building to run away and block line of sight as well and that does take us to the end of battle round 2. So the end of battle round 2 is carnage across the battlefield with the Brotherhood of Mutants just beating down the Midnight Suns, two of them didn't get a turn and are flipping their card um, Black Cat's one away from flipping her card, Doctor Strange almost died it's pretty nasty and that is reflected in the victory points gained as well, the Brotherhood of Mutants have all four Celestial Hammers for four victory points they are also holding the central portal for 5 in total, taking them to 8 I think. And then the Midnight Suns, they just hold that back portal down there with Doctor Strange and Black Cat for 1. This portal here is contested, Moon Knight and Mr. Sin- oh actually no hang on, Moon Knight is still healthy, he didn't go down. Never mind, so that is actually Midnight Suns controlled, so that's one extra point for them, so that will take them to 6. Now it's also worth pointing out, had Scarlet Witch gotten 1 or 2 more damage, however much it was, on Moon Knight and taking them out, with everything else that happened, that would have met the criteria for difficult to please, so Magneto could have had an extra turn. Not that there's really anything he could do with it from where he is, but it's just funny that it almost kind of just happened without any kind of planning or forethought. Anyway, let's jump into Battle Round 3. The Midnight Suns are trailing regardless, but they are taking first activation. So Blade got Battle Round 3 started by moving up to the portal and Magneto over here and then we haven't actually finished his turn entirely but because Siege of Darkness was played we're going to cover that first. So any number of Midnight Sun characters can spend 2 power to play this, any that did can do a zero cost attack, it's their version of Wakanda Forever and usually it'd be very good but not if all the dice rolls are terrible. He did a basic katana attack, his uh, blade's katana is mystic so it was going against 6 against Magneto but it does proc the bleed regardless of damage, so even though it did no damage Magneto was bleeding. 
Iron Fist and Moon Knight both spent two power to do their free attacks as well. Moon Knight whiffed entirely for nothing. Uh, Iron Fist spiked a little bit. He got five through on Mr. Sinister, but he's using up his two genetic mutation, or sorry, genetic sample tokens to bring that down to three. So Blade still has another actual action, so we'll be back after that. So Blade spent four power on his Knight of the Damn Fear, best attack, seven dice physical, reroll all attack dice against anyone who's bleeding, which Magneto was. Uh, I think it also did something else that isn't relevant. Let's see here. Uh, oh yeah, it would have allowed him a free medium move, but he's where he wants to be. Now, sadly, it only did one damage. Again, Magneto rolls six defense dice against Mystic, so it's not super surprising, um, but still unfortunate. So one damage to Magneto. The, the Midnight Suns, their luck just turned like to, to the exact opposite of when Moon Knight did tons of damage turn one. Oh, one last thing to cover for Blade, just for clarity's sake, because he ended his turn within two of someone who is bleeding, he gains one power and would have healed one damage if he had any damage on his flip side. So Wanda activated first for the Brotherhood for Battle Round 3. We're not actually finished going through her turn yet, she still has one action, but just had to cover a dice roll that she got just to show uh, what kind of game this has been. Uh, for the record though, she did play the Whims of Chaos to start her turn, she spent two power plus one because she's holding a hammer and you pick an enemy or an ally that's not dazed within three and if it's an ally you can heal them once or remove a stats effect. She removed Magneto's bleed and if it's an enemy you can give them one of three stats conditions. She set blade on fire. Wanda has a mean streak. Anyway then she spent for Cruel Twist eight mystic dice up to nine because she had a hammer. Crits don't count in the defense roll. You also don't get additional dice for crits. She counts skulls as successes, and the initial roll of those nine dice is this pile right here. Four crits, two hits, two skulls, all count as successes. Those four crits turned into three more successes. Blade had four dice down to three. He is a smear on the floor. He is very gone, and Wanda still has an actual action left. So for Wanda's other action, she fired a hex bolt from where she was standing into Moon Knight again who this time saw it coming, so he buffed his Mystic Defense by 2 for 2 power, giving him 5 dice, and he fully blocked the damage, so thankfully he didn't go down, because things were looking bad for the Midnight Suns. Iron Fist activated, and he used the Iron Fist on poor Mr. Sinister, who took 4 damage, much more than was required thanks to the damage he took from before with Siege of Darkness, that he is out of there. Now unfortunately, Iron Fist used everything he had for his Iron Fist use, so the hammer has just been dropped there and neither of those two over there have any power to pick it up or potentially a target to even generate them some power. He has another action but he's not doing anything with it because he needs to hold that portal. So because they didn't want to activate Magneto just yet, Quicksilver went and just medium moved to clamber over the building technically because it's too large for the door and then moved again such that the Maximoff family is holding that middle portal there, fairly confident that with them all holding hammers and that portal, they're generating four victory points a turn as is, it's going to be quite pretty hard, uh, nigh impossible for the Midnight Suns to catch up. So Doctor Strange activated, he was over there with Black Cat, he spent three on Oster's Refuge to heal her for three, so she's only got one damage on her now. He then spent one power to interact with the Dark Portal of Dormammu, he's, he's doing the things he shouldn't. Would be more apt if the other Doctor Strange was the one on the table since he's coming out of the Dark Dimension, but whatever. So you roll a die, if it's anything other than a blank or a skull you can choose the portal you pop out at. His plan was to pop out at the one next to Iron Fist and Moon Knight to pick up the hammer, but he rolled a skull. So he got chosen to be popped out right there, which might, they might actually end up regretting a little bit. He takes one damage from travelling through the portal regardless, but that put him right smack dab there and Quicksilver is definitely the weakest of the three, so he fired his basic bolts of bedazzlement. They did one damage to him and pushed him back small. He then spent four on his Crimson Bands of Citriarch or whatever they're called and with the roll entirely. He had one success through, which was easily blocked. The spike happened in the opposite direction. That should have taken him out, but what can you do? So it's over to Magneto to end the turn for the Brotherhood, but then Black Cat and Moon Knight still have to go for the Midnight Suns. So Magneto activated last, and he did two reverse polarities on Doctor Strange, being able to fully reroll because he's within two, and at least Magneto's being consistent because he did exactly four damage with both of them, much more than is required, that another life has been claimed and Doctor Strange is out of there. So with Black Cat wanting just to hold that portal, she isn't really doing anything with her turn, so it really just came down to Moon Knight. So if we pan across here, we can take a look at what he got up to. 
Uh, his Unfortunately, his multiple personality role was once again a skull for no bonuses or benefits. But he just chucked flowing, throwing glaives, which generate one power regardless of damage done or not. First at Quicksilver, it did two damage. Quicksilver dropped his hammer, and that also generated one power for him to pick up the hammer behind him. He then chucked throwing glaives at Wanda. They only did one damage, but also generated one power, which he used to pick up the hammer. The Quicksilver dropped, because Quicksilver is dazed. So Moon Knight, he brought things back a little bit. He's holding two hammers, holding that portal, and he did daze Quicksilver. So the end of Battle Round 3 it isn't looking as comfortable for the Brotherhood as initially thought, at least in terms of victory points. In terms of controlling the table, I don't think anyone left can deal with Magneto and Wanda, but, you know, let's see how things go. The Midnight Suns hold the back portal up there. They also hold this portal down here. They have two hammers thanks to Moon Knight, so that is four victory points, taking them up to ten. The Brotherhood, thanks to Quicksilver losing that hammer, only have two hammers, one on Wanda, one on Magneto. But they're obviously also holding that central portal, so that's three victory points, which puts them at 11. So they've only got a one point lead, it's three models per side, and as we jump into Battle Round 4, the Brotherhood has regained priority. So Magneto got Battle Round 4 started, and I think he's basically brought this to its conclusion. He took a chance, he paid one power to use the Dark Portal of Dormammu, and that's the roll right there. It was a while, so he gets to choose the portal he spat out at, and of course, we pan over here, he popped out where he needed to be. He then spent four, whatever it is, on his Shrapnel Blast, doing it from himself, so area two. It only did one damage to Iron Fist, it did two to Moon Knight, which was enough to daze him. He dropped two hammers, Magneto paid two power to pick them up, so he's got three hammers on him, which buffed his basic attack from six dice to nine. He did that on Iron Fist, it did 5 damage, Iron Fist is gone. So that does mean on his own Magneto is currently giving 4 victory points, and Scarlet Witch is generating 2, and Quicksilver can help her secure. So Black Cat is the only surviving member of the Midnight Suns who gets a turn, she, she, she'd run away, there's nothing she can do, she would just hold that portal I guess. And then Quicksilver just needs to just move there. In fact, if he wanted to BM, he could just go counter that one with two long moves. Shall he BM? I mean, why not? Either way, right? <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's going to take us to the end of the game. So yeah, just to put a bow on this and call it done. Magneto, three hammers. Uh, Scarlet Witch has one hammer, so that's four victory points. And then they each hold one portal as well. That one and that one. Gives them exactly enough that they're at the 16 required to win. Um, Quicksilver could have helped secure if need be if Black Cat decided to go interrupt that one, but it doesn't matter. His double long move, it interrupts that over there. So the Midnight Suns stay at 10 and very, very comfortably lose to the Brotherhood. Magneto and his family are a force to be reckoned with, as we saw there. They just dominated the table, even though they trailed a little bit early on. But they just came back, they were barely scratched. I think Scarlet Witch had one damage, Manito had two, and one of that was travelling through a portal. They didn't even need to take um, much use of the affiliation bonus, I think it was used once. Just a very nasty matchup, and it is like being able to fit Magneto and Scarlet Witch into the same list and still have room for more bodies is definitely super threatening. I don't think Mr. Sinister did much for the list, really. Probably could have just had Toad and Okoye or something, you know, Toad plus another 2 threat, if, assuming you were playing 18. If you were playing 19, have Toad and a 3 threat, or a little bit less, just have a 3 threat. Because I, I don't think Mr. Sinister works well with them, but not that they needed to, because Magneto is just... If you let him, if you let him do his thing, there's just very little you can do to stop him. And Doctor Strange certainly tried, but he needed more backup than expected, and Blade just got absolutely flattened by Scarlet Witch. I mean, this was a fun one, but good grief was it pretty clear one-sided pretty early on, which is never that fun. You, you want it to be like close till the end. A lot of spiked dice one way or the other for both sides, but definitely the dice were, were particularly punishing for the Midnight Suns. And poor Moon Knight only got one bonus from his multiple personalities once. But oh well. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching. We'll hopefully see the Convocation affiliation, or at least part of it on the table soon-ish. Really looking forward to the releases next month, of course, with, or the end of this month, rather, with the Hulkbuster finally releasing. Can't wait for it. 
look forward to an unboxing of that as well. Thanks for watching, and until next time, ta-ta for now.